Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we're going to talk about a comparison that gets made pretty often. And uh, it was recently made by Representative Madison Cawthorn, I think. And I got to admit, when I first heard it, I laughed because it's entertaining. Because while in some ways it's true, the way it is often presented is ridiculous. He said that uh, civilian arms in the United States, well, that's to prevent tyranny. And that if you don't think that a bunch of civilians with rifles can stop tyranny and defeat a, a major military, you need to ask the VC what they did with the Marines and the Army. Yeah, I mean, I got to admit, at first I laughed. Then I started thinking about it. When we're still in the laughter phase, Robert Evans cracked me up because he made a comment about NVA erasure, the North Vietnamese Army. When people make this comparison, they often forget that backing up the Viet Cong was uh, the NVA, a well-disciplined, well-equipped conventional military that had sophisticated equipment. I'm guessing in the in-depth studies of the conflict that the people who make this comparison uh, performed, they must have missed Flight of the Intruder. They had people cracking jokes about strategists. Because I'm willing to bet that if you were to ask those who make this comparison who the chief strategist was, they're going to say Ho Chi Minh. And that's not right. I don't know of an American that would support this kind of thing that could match the North Vietnamese chief, chief strategist. I don't see that as something that's likely. In some ways, the parallels are there because that sophisticated weaponry, yeah, it would come, absolutely. Every opposition nation on the planet, every country that wants to see the United States ripped apart and fail and be irrelevant for a hundred years would be flooding the country with arms. Patriot. Because you care about the country, you're willing to do this. And that comparison, they always use the VC. And it makes sense on some level, citizen soldier. And it embodies the image they want. Ferocious, willing to endure anything, survive on nothing, never give up. That's the image. And that, that image of the VC, that's pretty well founded. That is pretty well founded. But I don't see the comparison. Surviving on a bowl of rice. Meanwhile, those who uh, fantasize about ripping their country apart, about hurting their neighbors, yeah, they had full-blown meltdowns because their favorite restaurant only had takeout. VC, they could endure anything. Meanwhile, most of those having this fantasy couldn't endure wearing a mask for 15 minutes in Walmart. I don't see the comparison. And when people talk about this, they always tend to look at it from the American perspective of a war. Where it's over there, you know? Somewhere far away. If you want to know about it, you want to see it, you can tune into the nightly news, watch clips, and cheer for your team. But that's not what it would be. And that image, all those cute sayings that Americans have, none of them make any sense anymore if you're on the other side. If you're not the force that is coming in to occupy, nobody ever won a war by dying for their country. They you win a war by making the other guy die for his. And see, that's the thing, that they, they believe they're going to survive this fantasy conflict. The reality is, the Vietnamese won a war exactly by dying for their country. If you total up North Vietnamese losses, all their fighters, NVA, VC, everybody, it's about 1.1 million. If you combine American and French combat losses, it's about 110,000. 10 to 1. They won through attrition. When you're sitting there and making these comments and you have this image in your head of your little ragtag fantasy team of you and your friends, understand, if there's 11 of you, 10 of you ain't making it. 
it isn't the same. That image, that fantasy, it's not reality. And the other part of it is that I don't get it. I mean, I went through my fiery rhetoric phase. But then at some point you have to ask, what are you so mad about? Why are you willing to destroy the country, rip the country apart, and lose millions? Why? Because kids are playing sports at high schools? Bathroom disputes? You don't like an ad that some multinational company put out? What are you so angry about? Why are you willing to do this? But they always point to the VC. You know, the other examples that get used occasionally are Afghanistan and Iraq. 20 years. These conflicts, they lasted decades. I don't know if it lasts decades in their little fantasies. You start something like this, the children are finishing it. And for what? I've asked that question a lot. Nobody's ever been able to give me an answer. Nobody's ever been able to tell me why they're so mad, why they're willing to do this, why they would even talk like this. This country needs more engineers. It needs more scientists. It needs more nurses, doctors, welders, truck drivers. We need a lot of things in this country. The one thing we don't need is more combat vets. We've got enough. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.